first of all, kind of if we take take you back to the start of playing, because obviously lots of people in the Batman community know about you know Freya as you are at the moment and all your successes, but um, not a lot of people know kind of what got you going in Batman and how you started. So I think it's about the age of nine, um, being multi kind of talented and load of sports from what I uh, hear and read in terms of gymnastics, ballet, netball, even even swimming. Um, yeah. Why Bampton, I guess? Well, I, I was doing a bit of tennis as well, actually. That was my kind of main one with the other other sports. And no one in my family actually plays badminton. They're a bit more tennis-based. Um, so I just kind of went along to like a junior club on a Saturday morning and kind of instantly just really liked it um, and went then went to the county from Middlesex originally. So started there, really, and just kind of felt like I could really, you know, want to do this more and gradually stop the other sports to focus on badminton um yeah amazing um obviously you've been in the setup throughout all the age ranges um as you were going through was there a particular time where you were like actually like i'm really good at this and i'm i'm (laughs) um i mean i think obviously when you're doing it as much as like we are in training and competing you you always have that feeling of like you know I can, I can make it because otherwise it, it's a lot of effort to put in if you don't feel like you can do that um but I think probably after playing for England a junior a few times and kind of getting a bit more success as I got older and um started competing with the kind of older girls as well kind of felt well you know I, I want to do this and I can see myself doing well in the future yeah how old were you when you when you had first made your England kind of junior day I I was 12. Um, it was an under 15 quad tournament in Cardiff. Um, and we, I won the doubles actually in semi and singles. And that was like, I was like so happy. And it just like really kind of motivates you. I think when you're younger, getting a bit of success definitely drives you um, to want to, you know, carry on. And yeah. Am I right in thinking you you played all three disciplines at a really high standard? Because looking through some of some of the junior nationals, you were you were competing and and doing really well, meddling in in singles, in doubles, in mixed as well. Kind of at what stage do you go? Oh, maybe maybe singles is my thing. Or... Yeah, I mean, because I've always loved playing all of the events. I mean, singles has always had a extra special place, but um, yeah, I've always enjoyed playing doubles as well and. Um, I'd say uh, coming out of juniors, so kind of under 19, it was kind of the time to really be like, okay, you know, pick one really. And singles was was always the one for me that I wanted to give like a go at first. I think it's it's very hard if you went to doubles to then come back to singles. So, um, yeah, I don't regret it at all. (laughs) Even even though now you're you're currently injured do you find that with singles being obviously covering a lot more space and a lot more kind of um stop start and the agility being a little bit higher than the levels events um do you find that niggles and injuries are kind of creeping a bit more than when you were playing the other two or yeah i mean it's definitely very demanding on the body um so it's, it's quite like i mean there's obviously lots of different types of injuries you can get in doubles and singles but i think yeah it's it's been quite a lot and the movement I have to gain to kind of come back will be tough, but I'm progressing well and um, yeah, ready for 2023. How how far off do you think do you think you are? Is it st- is it still months away? Is it early kind of? No, well, I'm actually you... hoping to play um, the Iceland tournament FS in j- January, the end of January. Mm-hmm. So that's that's going to be my goal. Um, so kind of yeah, gradually building building up at the moment and um yeah i really hope really hope to be back competing i'm missing it a lot yeah definitely fingers, fingers crossed for you for sure how would you like you yeah. seem always so full of positivity so bubbly how how do you obviously when you're not being able to compete and that is you know what you love doing when you are injured how, how do you kind of keep that you know that warmth kind of vibe and you know the the same level of enthusiasm that you would have when you're on court yeah, I mean, it's not always easy, but I think you really just have to focus on, like, what you can get better at. And there's still a lot of other areas that, you know, like tactical side of things and even, like, technical that you can keep doing. And 
I've been working hard in the gym as well to get stronger so which is an area I need to work on anyway so I think it's just about looking for those little advantages you can still gain even when you're not like fully training um and having like setting yourself goals um so yeah aiming for like a tournament or progressing in training each week has just been my kind of mini goals over the last few months so do you find that you get a few more cheat days creeping in with the diet just <laughs> straight because it you know, I was asking the same of, of, of Toby before and I was saying it's not really well documented what a what a badminton athlete kind of does from a diet perspective. And, you know, it's different from every individual. But how, how do you find it? Yeah, I mean, it is very different. But I think, I yeah, I'm generally pretty good. I mean, I, I very enjoy my food. I think we all have big appetites, you know, training a lot. Um, but it's, yeah, I've, I've stuck at it while I was training. I think around Christmas time, you know, you always allow a few extra treats and, and things so um but yeah I mean you're doing a lot of training so you can definitely reward yourself with with some treats now and then do you, do you have any sorry going back to before you said that you liked all your other sports um before you can commit to bounty did you still have time to to play your tennis or anything like that you enjoy or was it a bit hard getting not regular yeah not regularly but actually in lockdown because tennis came back before badminton because obviously it was outdoors yeah, I yeah. actually started I actually was playing more tennis than I was badminton at that point um just for a bit of fun again like with my family um so yeah when I can I think definitely in the summer I prefer it because I'm not I'm not one for the cold weather so you get a lot, you get a lot of time off in the badminton year at the end of the season do you get a bit of downtime away from events and stuff yeah or? we've definitely yeah we've definitely got a bit of downtime coming up this week um I mean I've feel like I've had enough time off at the moment so I'm actually very keen to kind of get back get back training but um going home towards the end of this week and got a few days off over the, the Christmas holiday and then for New Year's as well so it'd be nice to get back relax and then refresh to come back and, and go at it again yeah yeah back to winning weights speak speaking of winning weights um I had a quick look through some of your <laughs> pages and pages of amazing achievements <laughs> Um, through your various tournaments and it was over, yeah over 60 different medals from your kind of junior career starting all the way back at kind of under 13 level which is amazing as you're you're only 22 at the moment um that feeling of winning which obviously you must be well accustomed to with all of those medals um does it ever change does it ever wear off is it something that ever makes you kind of less motivated or is it always equally as satisfying when you kind of get that titan and whatever event it is that you're playing yeah it definitely doesn't wear off um I think actually even more so when you kind of go into senior level you're definitely not winning as much um because it's such a big jump from from juniors so um when you do kind of get those good wins in in tournaments or actually winning medals then it's just like even better I think it's such a good feeling I think for everyone you know and especially for me, like, I'm very competitive and to, to get success like really does drive you. And I think that's why we're in here every day. Um, but, yeah, it definitely doesn't wear off. <laughs> <laughs> um, is, there, is there extra pressure with different events? Because obviously you're, you're competing, you know, everywhere. But when it comes to things like the Nationals, is it is it a different kind of lead up? Is it a different preparation or is it just it's a tournament? I'm going to follow my same routines what's it like yeah I think in terms of like routines you know you kind of approach tournaments in the same way you know you try to have that that pre-tournament routine or whatever works very different for everyone but that is generally the same but I feel like yeah there are different pressures when you are playing in England because it's not often you actually play against other English players um obviously in training we're training with each other but when you're abroad it's very rare or you know you play in other countries more so when you're then having to compete against each other in your own country, it can be a bit more like, oh, you know, you know this person really well kind of thing. They know you. Um, it can add a bit more pressure, but yeah, it's always it's always good fun competing. In are, are there high hopes for 2023 Nationals? Because obviously it must, have, it must have been strange for you this year, kind of sat there watching, seeing how other people are doing, although I'm sure m many of them are your friends and you want them to do well, but <laughs> obviously you, you want to be there yourselves. And you're probably wanting to kind of go that one step further than the two previous kind of um, runner-up places in the Nationals um, to, to claim that senior title, which I know that you've got back in um, your under-15s in, in, <laughs> in the Kingdoms. Um, what, what, what's, what's the feeling for 2023? Is it 
yeah, I mean, I was gutted to not be able to play this year, but I mean, I'm really hoping I'll I'll be back strong and for um for February, I think it is. It's actually not very long away again. Um, so yeah, I mean, definitely go for the title. Um, but yeah, it'd be great just to be back competing and playing again. So I'm really looking forward. Best best of luck for that one in the uh, thank you. Beforehand. Um, world rankings they change all the time. Obviously, with injury, you can go from having a great position to a low position. Is it something that massively impacts you? Obviously, you were, you know, I think 101 uh, in November, which is amazing considering how many people are on the scene, kind of on the global stage. Um, is it something that kind of informed your kind of motivations and goals or is it something that's just a, a bonus in, in what you look at after some of the events? Yeah, I mean, it definitely informs kind of what tournaments you play because, you know, to be able to get into higher level tournaments, your ranking you know you have to have a certain ranking and same with like qualification in tournaments so to be able to get into main draw it helps with that and things and european things like that um it's definitely going to be a bit of a hard pill to swallow at the moment with going down because i'm not playing any tournaments because my ranking was really going up and i was really wanting to break to that top 100 but that's still going to be a goal for me this year um you know hopefully i can get back competing again soon and then can start climbing up again but yeah, it's it's def- it's not like the be all and end all, but it's definitely a bonus to to be doing well in the rankings to show that you're progressing and to get into these tournaments. So yeah, hopefully get that get that back up again. Yeah, I mean, and you're only you're only 22, and you were doing amazingly well before your injury. So I'm sure you're just going to be climbing really high um, in those as as soon as you're back. Um, talking a bit more about the kind of England and GB setup. Obviously, you uh went to the Commonwealth Games, the home games, and did, did brilliantly well. What, what was it like being a part of that? Because a lot of badminton, particularly in tournaments, is um, although you are representing England, you're kind of representing yourself. And then obviously going into an event which has that element, but also has the team element as well. How was it being a part of that Team GB kind of team ethos? Yeah, it was, it was amazing. I mean, it was one of the best experiences I've ever had, um, for sure. But... I always love like team events and I think it just makes it extra special and that extra drive that you kind of have when you're not just competing for yourself, but you've got other people that you're working with as well. And um, yeah, I absolutely loved it. And the atmosphere was amazing, especially to have a home game. Um, so yeah, amazing experience. We'd love to do it again. I'm sure, I'm sure you are. I guess that is up there with the pinnacle of sport and there's there's only one more because you know, that's that step high which is the olympics so you know who knows you've got a lot of time ahead of you um it'd be great yeah. be great to see you there um <laughs> how, how would you manage the the stuff that you obviously with badminton training all the time competing and studying at the same time that must be that must be so difficult yeah i mean i i took up an open university in lockdown as we had a bit more time um, but I'm doing it part time, so it can be a lot sometimes. But it's fairly manageable at the moment. So I'm just starting my third year um, of six because it's part time. <laughs> but I feel like it's quite nice to have something on the side as well with training, just to take your mind off things as well and know that you've got something else that you're working towards. Um, so it's not just you know badminton and training all the time, but you give yourself that balance. So I have definitely been enjoying it. Yeah.